I love telling this story. Last year, I went for um, an ultrasound. The results of the ultrasound were a highly suggestive malignancy. So that weekend was my 50th class reunion, which I was in charge of. So I thought, well, I'm just gonna put that out of my head until Monday, because I have to get through the weekend. And it was perfect timing. God gave me that weekend with all my old classmate friends and then uh, I had a biopsy that proved that it was malignant. And then I had an ectomy, a lumpectomy. But if I can go back to the year before, I was kind of going through a transitional period. What my, one of my dear friends passed away and I was praying for friends, that God would send me friends. So I do a book club at the library. August, two new ladies showed up. September, another new lady showed up. So now we're up to 17 people in our book club. Uh, and that was when I joined Bible Study Fellowship the year before. God was already working in my life, supplying these friends and support group for when I went through the cancer. I had my surgery the week before Thanksgiving. My book club friends supplied our Thanksgiving dinner. And then two weeks later, they came and decorated my house for Christmas. Because of the reunion being right at the same time, I just had such an outpouring from classmates, cards and emails, and everyone was volunteering to help. Bible study, I had so many offers like to drive me to radiation. I could have driven myself, but I felt like I really needed to let these people help me. It was just such a, a <laughs> if you can say it, a wonderful time, a wonderful experience, how God just poured out his love for me, um, letting me be blessed by all these different people, old friends and new friends, and how he had prepared me ahead of time. In the fall, we were studying First Kings, studying Elijah. He was exhausted after all that he went through with Ahab and Jezebel, and he was hungry and depressed. and. Um, God sent an angel to minister to him and to feed him. And then God told him to go to the mountain and he was in the cave and the wind, the destructive wind, and then the earthquake and the fire. But God was not in the wind or the earthquake or the fire. And he spoke to Elijah in a soft whisper and Elijah knew his voice. After God administered to Elijah and did the wind and the, the earthquake and the fire, God was not in those three things, but he was in, in control of them. And then he told Elijah to get back to work, told him to get going, get back to Damascus, and get back to work. I really took to that story of Elijah, and I felt that God was not in the cancer, but he was in control of the cancer. And so I had nothing to worry about. I just placed all that faith, all my faith in him that he was in control of my life. I thought, well, I'm gonna follow God's direction with Elijah and, and get back to work. So I tried to do things for other people while I was in my recovery time before I started radiation. To me, it's just a story of how God was preparing ahead of time and how he helped me through that, through the whole process of the cancer, step by step, God put women in my life that had already had breast cancer. So they could encourage me and tell me their stories and their outcomes. Down to the very last one, a nurse that was going off duty was giving report and she told the other nurse she had to go to radiation before she started work so she would be a little late. That day was her first day of radiation for breast cancer. And I said, I just finished radiation. So I was able to minister to her on her first day of radiation. 